Now, for a country that's always eager to celebrate its history, there's remarkably little commemoration of the USA's oldest heritage, art that was created by its indigenous peoples. Some may say that's not surprising given the particularly brutal way many Native Americans were treated during settlement of European pioneers, as Rajan Datta now explains. Here in Arizona, in the south of the US, you can find some of the biggest collections of historical Native American art. The famous tribes of the Navajo, Hopi and Pueblo Indians settled here, and today they help make up the second largest total Native American population of any American state. In fact, a quarter of the state is reservation land. We drove deep into the desert, 90 miles southwest of the capital, Phoenix. It's here, in the middle of nowhere, you suddenly find 800 or so examples of ancient petroglyphic art. Some of these etchings go back as far as 7,000 years. It's mostly created by the chipping and scraping away of the top surface of the basalt boulders to expose a lighter layer underneath. The patterns that you see are, are patterns that you would see uh, in pottery as well. Christopher Short is a passionate student of Native American art like this. They're all beautiful. They're all connections to our past. They're all stories. Remember that these people didn't have any sort of written tradition. So they had oral histories, they had oral storytelling, and they had this sort of marking. Mm. And that's, that's the history that we have to work with. Uh, there's some really good... Christopher photographs traditional petroglyphs in their natural environments. See that it's shaded by those rocks? Yeah. There's some great stuff in there. He's descended on his mother's side from an Indian tribe. But he didn't feel connected to his roots until he moved from Oklahoma to live here in Arizona. I'm citizen Potawatomi Nation. Uh, my native name is Goma Wasea, which means source and light, which is, I think, quite appropriate for the art form that I do. The work is both symbolic and naturalistic and goes back as far as seven or 8,000 years. They're believed to have been remnants of the Hohokam community. Hohokam literally means the people who came before. Native American culture is, is very, very important. It is the history of this country and is the undercurrent of culture in this country. Before there were settlers, there was this culture and there were these people who were eating and surviving and thriving and, and telling stories and singing songs and making their artwork. So that's something that's important enough that it really absolutely has to be preserved. There's a really profound sense of whimsy in some of these petroglyphs. It may be shamanistic trances or it may be hallucinations, but you see, you see representations of people with what looks like ducks on their heads. Mm. And to me, you know, that makes me laugh. That, that's a spirit of whimsy and a spirit of play, yeah. which I think uh, is important in any culture and in any person. But this site, like many others, is under threat. And the degrading of the ancient art isn't just because of age or the weather. We have everything from people shooting at cultural sites like this, especially petroglyphs, uh, uh, shooting them with firearms and damaging them because it chips off the rock, or throwing paint on something and the paint doesn't go away, it absorbs into the rock and it's very hard to remove these things. Even the oils in our hands can destroy the patina and the surfaces of these of these boulders. Cheryl's job is to help in the management and protection of ancient sites like this and in educating the wider American public about their own history. The modern indigenous people regard this as a very special place, but it's also part of our shared heritage. A lot of these rocks, they're a very dark color and almost have a shine to them. Mm. The elements in this exposed landscape are an obvious problem in the preservation of these sites. But then there's also vandalism. So this is graffiti from 1957. In fact, yes. if you look around, there's graffiti from 1907 over there and 18. Right. Is that right? Is this, does this still count as graffiti? <laughs> well, that's, that's the part that becomes interesting because there's even an 1879 date here. Yeah. 
some of the historians get very interested in that and they will try to do uh, searches on those names to see if they were connected with some of the historic trails, for mm. instance. So that division between graffiti and historic is sometimes a little fuzzy. So there are real issues about the preservation of these ancient cultural remnants. But this is where Christopher steps back in. He photographs and then recreates the petroglyphs with a twist. What symbols, what artwork are you looking for as being potentially good for you? I look for stuff that's stylistically interesting, but also is simple enough that when I project it, it's not just going to be a mess. Yes. Yeah. But like these individual shapes here, mm -hmm. like this lizard, is absolutely something that I could use. I've taken the pictures, I've added them to a library. Then it's back to Chris's place to Photoshop the images he's taken. I've loaded this sheep, mm -hmm. or perhaps it's a goat, it's not entirely clear, and put a selection in it so I can isolate it from the background. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, I'm refining the lines a little bit and making it smoother. Stage three is the clever and artistic bit. This is a seven-line argon-ion laser. Yep. That Using laser projection of the digitized images onto sandstone rocks, which Chris has gathered from the desert. Well, this looks like a jumble of rocks. You know, it, it's actually very, very carefully set to, to mask lights and to reflect and, and block lights. The purpose is to create what he calls impressionistic dreamscapes. So, Chris, everything's set up. We're ready to go. Yep. Uh, you can kill the lights at any time. Kill we'll the take lights. Take some pictures. Okay. I'm basically turning rock art into science fiction. This is spirit and science and art all intersecting in a really, in my garage. And that's so satisfying. Christopher's doing more than that. He's showing how this much neglected jewel of American heritage can live on and inform and enrich the lives of generations to come. That's it for this week. Join us next week when... There's another chance to see Rajan's journey through Bavaria, from surfing in Munich to sleeping deep underneath a mountain range. It's way past one o'clock. They're now playing the big drums. How are you supposed to sleep to this? To seeing one of the world's strangest and noisiest festivals. Join us for that if you can. And don't forget, you can follow us in real time on our social media feeds. The details should be on your screen now. But until next time, from me, Carmen Roberts, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in Hawaii, it's goodbye.